Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name's Jim. Glad to have you riding along today. This is our 300th episode today. 300 episodes. If you take 300 and divide 52 into it, you get 5.77. So that's about five and three quarter years of doing a podcast. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. That's our webpage. Once you've landed there, you can visit our Boomer's General Store. That's the home of the famous Baby Boomer Tales coffee mugs. Links to our book, Got a Job. There are links where you can hear our podcast. Probably not 300 of them, but there's a bunch of links either on social media or podcast host pages or YouTube channel, things like that. October 27th is the 300th day of the year. That's only because it's a leap year. If it wasn't a leap year, it'd be October 26th every year, 300th day. I started this podcast on January 29th, 2019, with no idea where this would go. I thought at the time I could do a thousand. I figured it all in and I'd be in my 80s, but no problem, right? Podcast, that's easy to do, right? Well, it's not really easy to do. It turns into a grind. It's like everything. And when I contemplate quitting, usually I do that when I just can't come up with something or my numbers are down for a couple weeks in a row than what I'm used to, or something. And then I figure, well, this is what I do. This is what I do. I do a podcast. You've got to do something, especially when you're older. When you're younger, you have to do something. You do. You're raising a family and trying to buy a car and buy a house and all that stuff. But when you get to be my age, which I'm 74, that's 30 and 30 and half a 30, basically. I'm going to be 75, so that'd be 75. Well, I've had tens of thousands of downloads on this podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. If you enjoy this podcast, please share it with others. That's the very best advertising I can do. And my website, which this really shocked me. I figured I'd get some downloads on the podcast just from everything I read in this little school I went through learning how to do podcasts and stuff. But we've had over 10,000 hits on the web page. So maybe I come up on a Google search. Whenever I search baby boomers or senior citizens or things like that, we do show up on search engines. So I don't know what that means. I think that's good. You've got to somehow advertise. And in the 21st century, it's not putting your advertisement in the newspaper or the yellow pages. Do either one of those exist anymore? Okay, I promise, because it's our 300th episode, I promised the munchies that they could say a little something. So, here goes. Jeff, you said the date wrong last week (laughs) you said 2004 and you went to 2014 (laughs) sorry there gata yes i didn't catch that we know we know (laughs) we know (laughs) okay get out of here guys that's enough i guess when i was doing the musicians and the date some of these wonderful, great musicians that touched our very lives died, I stopped at 2014. Somewhere I said I stopped at 2004. So leave it to the munchies to catch that kind of stuff. They're always catching that kind of stuff. I think they listen very intently after the podcast is published and, and released so that they have something that they can come back to me and say they want to do their housekeeping segment. Because I let them do housekeeping, you know. They knock on the door and 
they all say housekeeping and then they say something smart like they're the smartest creatures on earth yes which i have to admit they're pretty bright they're always catching me at something but i don't know what i'd do without them thank you munchies you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> Our song of the week this week is Forever and Ever Amen by Randy Travis, written by Paul Overstreet and Don Schlitz. It was released in March of 1987. It was Travis's third number one single on the U.S. Hot Country Charts. The inspiration for this great song was when Slitch's little boy, his young son, prayed at night, after saying his night with prayers, he would usually turn to his mom, who was standing there watching him, and say to her, I love you forever and ever. And he'd end it with amen. Kind of laugh and jump into bed or whatever. Great inspiration, your family, and your friends, and your loved ones. Great inspiration for life. As long as old men sit and talk about the weather, as long as old women sit and talk about old men. A baby elephant weighs around 300 pounds. 300 pounds is about 1 20th of that of a tongue of a blue whale. The tongue weighs about 6,000 pounds. Not the whale, The tongue of the whale weighs about 6,000 pounds. Amazing. They must be totally huge. I mean, I know they are, but your tongue weighs 6,000 pounds? I'm sure my tongue doesn't weigh 6 ounces. Maybe it does. A football playing field is 300 feet long. If you hit a golf ball 300 yards, you're hitting that golf ball pretty good. A building that's 300 feet tall is about 20 stories high. Old Gideon in the Bible, he had 300 men and they won the battle against a huge imposing enemy. And then it went on to distribute Bibles into hotel rooms. A one-car garage is about 300 square feet. $300 in pennies weigh over 68 pounds and of course when you bowl 300 you've got yourself a perfect game you might find what you need and more at home or kate's general store you might find what you need and more at home or kate's general store Well, Homer, did you find some shoes that fit you? Oh, Jerry, Jerry, these things, if Katie knew I put my feet into these shoes, then who knows who had their feet in there first. She wouldn't even let me into the bed tonight, so don't tell her, Jerry. Well, hasn't Katie ever gone bowling before, Homer? Yeah. Yeah, she has, but she doesn't let me wear those shoes. She makes me bowl in my socks. I wish I had fancy shoes like you do, Jerry. Look at those things. They're all polished up, and there's no numbers on the heels. Tells you what size they are. What size you wear there, Jerry? And they're nice and blue. Ooh, doggies. I know. Homer, I don't like those shoes either. That's why I have my own shoes and my own ball. Well, Jerry, Jerry, I had a bowl ball once, but when we moved here from North Carolina, I must have lost it because I can't find it anywhere, and it's been years ago. That's okay, Homer. Looks like you've picked a good one out right there. Yeah, Jerry, it's sparkly, isn't it? And they say it's over 10 pounds, maybe 12, maybe 14. I don't know. I can still pick it up. Yeah, Homer, I don't know. 
it should say on it somewhere. Well, okay, Jerry. Jerry, I'm telling you right now that I'm going to bowl me a 300 game. 300, Jerry. That is called a perfect game. All you have is X's when you keep score and none of those slashes and none of those straight lines and none of those zeros. Just X's. And when you do X's for 10 frames, Jerry, you've got 300. 300. I know, Homer. I know how to keep score. Remember, I'm always keeping score for us. Yeah, Jerry, I know you are, and you're pretty smart because you can figure that stuff out. Like when you bowl a spare and then you get a strike, or when you get a strike and then you get three pins after and one pin after that, you know how to do that. Well, simple math, Homer. Well, that's good, Jerry, because I'm a simple person with numbers and everything else. But I can tell you how much change you get when you come into the store and I count it back to you. Like when you buy something for a dollar and you give me 94 cents, I know to give you a penny and a nickel back. And that makes a dollar, Jerry. That makes one dollar. Yeah. Oh, I know. Okay. Well, whose turn is to bowl first? Can I bowl first, Jerry? Because I want to get going on that 300 game. Homer, you know you can. You're always welcome to be the very first bowler. Okay, Jerry. Oh, before I throw this here ball, I was supposed to tell you, and I forgot, I was supposed to tell you that Pop said we came here too late and we wouldn't get home till after his bedtime and that's why he didn't come. And Gator Earl said he's sorry, but he's so busy running Apple's Cafe now that he owns that puppy that he just had to take a rain check, Jerry. A rain check. That means that I guess he can't bowl till it rains. That means he'll catch us some other time, Homer, and that's okay. I understand. I understand too, Jerry. That Gator Earl, he's a busy young man. I'm very proud of him, and I feel sorry that he's not going to get to see me throw a 300 game with this used bowling ball and these stinky shoes. I'm doing it because I'm wearing the shoes and not bowling in my socks, Jerry. So here goes. Good luck to you, Homer. Okay, I stand here. And then I... One, two, three, four. I've got room to take four steps. And I swing the ball back. And then I let it go. So here goes. I'm going to aim at that front pin. I am. I'm aiming at that front pin. Here goes. Woo, doggies! I got a strike! Ha <laughs> ha! Well, that's our 300th episode. I hope Homer does okay at the bowling alley. Next week will be our 301st episode, and I think we're going to have a little Halloween special. It will be the 30th when next week's is released, so we'll see how that comes out for us. Thank you for riding along today. I know I said that at the beginning, but my mama always taught me to say please and thank you. Also, thank you for sharing this episode and this podcast with your friends, neighbors, and anybody you know, I really do appreciate it. Always be kind. It's the high road. And the high road is where the view is the very best. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.